After 26 years and 10 core games, you'd think that Mortal Kombat would be running on fumes by now. After having successfully rebooted itself in 2011 and then adding to that fire with a fuel tank of innovation in 2014's Mortal Kombat X, what could Mortal Kombat 11 possibly do next for the franchise? The answer is surprisingly simple, as Mortal Kombat 11 doesn't reinvent its signature mousetrap of carnage, it doubles down on what makes it feel so unique and then polishes it up with a mirror shine that is blinding to say the least. At the same time, Mortal Kombat 11 juggles numerous ideas, as it serves to not only end an era of rebirth ever since developer Netherrealm took over the franchise, but it also creates a foundation for bold new beginnings and stories to take place in the future. A tribute to the past and a brave step forward into the days that are yet to come is only one apt description for Mortal Kombat 11. It's a classic. Back me wasn't bad enough. Time is broken. Kronika, God of Eternity, has decided to reveal herself after having spent eons in the shadows manipulating the sands of time and using them to shape destiny for anyone who was ever involved in the Mortal Kombat tournament. With Raiden's recent actions having thrown a massive spanner into her plan to keep all the realms in a state of perpetual conflict so that a sense of balance could be restored, Kronika embarks on a mission to create a new era of endless war. Finally aware of her manipulation, Raiden and the Earthrealm warriors find themselves drawn into a quest that merges the past and present together to create a new future. As powerful as she may be, Kronika realizes that she'll need an army of her own to keep Earthrealm at bay. Enter a blast from the past, as the goddess of time recruits past versions of some of Outworld's mightiest conquerors to guard her. The stage is set, the warriors are ready to duel, and all of time is at stake. What more could you ask for in a story? It's an idea where Mortal Kombat flourishes once again, combining Hong Kong action with Hollywood's over-the-top style for theatrics, sci-fi themes with mystical Shaolin Kung Fu adventure, in a manner in which only Mortal Kombat can get away with. If Mortal Kombat X proved that the series could spin a story that had plenty of heart to it, then Mortal Kombat 11 reinforces that idea with its own narrative There's plenty of moments that are both comical and tragic. Once again, every actor is cast perfectly in their role. Well, almost everyone, because as much star power as Ronda Rousey brings to the table as Sonya Blade, her skills are better suited to rearranging faces in the UFC octagon than they are in delivering an entirely okay performance that is quickly outshone by a far more talented cast around her. Minor gripes aside, if you are looking for a weekend of fisticuffs that'll take around 5 hours to finish, then Mortal Kombat 11 has your back. On the more mechanical side of the game, Mortal Kombat 11 feels like a wildly different beast. When compared to the 2015 incarnation, there's a wealth of overt and covert changes to the formula that positions Mortal Kombat 11 in a comfortable spot between casual bludgeon fest and more serious professional fare. Retaining the variant system from X, Mortal Kombat 11 now also gives players the tools to further customize their chosen warrior according to their preferred playstyle. Are you a fan of Aaron Black but you'd rather have him focus on twin pistol shootouts and ditch his arsenal of asset bottles as a compromise? You can do just that with every character in the massive roster featuring their own collection of attacks, skins, and other cosmetic enhancements aplenty. Provided that you're up for a long and lengthy walk through Shang Tsung's island where all those goodies are stored. Welcome, traveler. I am Shang Tsung, and this is my island. I bid you welcome to explore. Hidden among the island's ruins are treasure, magic, and very special artifacts. Take what you want, within reason. You'll find the time spent here is well rewarded. 
This is where Mortal Kombat 11 makes a massive slip up. On the surface, the idea of a dedicated level where players can explore the ruins of the original Mortal Kombat tournament grounds and uncover treasure sounds like a delightful diversion. There are skins to be unlocked, secondary fatalities to be found, and a whole host of other cosmetics to uncover to help you define your favourite character. The problem here is that there's just so damn much of it, with most treasure chests requiring an absurd amount of coin to unlock. While you could argue that the Towers of Time are designed to be tense experiences that reward players with the funds necessary to do so, once you realise that each character has literally dozens of skins, icons and accessories, you quickly realise that Shang Tsung's Island is a soul-sucking tour of a literal loot box location. Compare this approach to Netherrealm's previous work in Injustice 2 and it comes off as a backflip into more predatory business practices. Where Injustice 2 was happy to reward you high tier loot boxes just for an errant bat fart of activity in the multiverse, Mortal Kombat 11 makes you earn every single coin possible through bloody action and then still asks you to gamble it on the contents of a mystery box that will probably reward you with concept art and a player icon. In 2019, this idea feels more dated than Kano's 1992 wardrobe. Fundamentally though, Mortal Kombat 11 is slower and far more measured than ever before. There's a more subtle layer of strategy beneath the surface, one that rewards players for thinking two steps ahead and truly mastering the combos available to them. While you'll seldom see overly long strings of attacks that reek of dialed in inputs, players can chain together multiple combos with skill when an opportunity presents itself. We'll still get into a far more technical review of the deepest system mechanics in a few more days, but so far it's safe to say that Mortal Kombat X's obsession with juggling opponents and keeping them airborne for as long as possible is an idea that's mostly been left in the past. What still remains is that deliciously ultra-violent action, with the new Fatal Blow system summing up this shift in competitive direction perfectly. The evolution of the X-Ray system from previous Mortal Kombat's of this decade, Fatal Blows are simple enough to grasp. They are Hail Mary actions, a last gasp of action that can be used once per match, when your health bar goes below 30%. Do you use it when the first round of a match is not going your way, or save it for the second round just in case? Maybe you'll keep your distance because being caught on the receiving end of a Fatal Blow means that the momentum of an entire bout can shift dramatically back towards the warrior who initiated it. It is a delightful new feature, one that adds more substance to Mortal Kombat 11 and its more cerebral gameplay as players now also have a regenerating meter that allows them to burn through special moves and environmental interactions. It's kind of like chess if you think about it, if Gary Kasparov violently decapitated his opponents every time they had him in check. Like Friday. The shot our face, Johnny. The shot our face. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11 pushes its new Unreal 4 engine visuals to the bleeding edge of what's possible, resulting in characters who look more lifelike than ever before, and you'll often find yourself wincing in pain every time you see a ribcage shatter or organs ripped out from their torsos. It is ghoulish and horrific content that is wonderfully over the top when you add salt to injury and pull off fatalities that have to be seen to be believed. Fatality. Kano wins. From end of match finishes that see spines ripped out bodies with a bloody boot, to watching an unholy nightmare fuel spider erupt from a torso, Netherrealm's talent for creating the grisliest deaths possible for its cost is as wonderfully demented as ever. I don't think I can stress enough just how much of a visual upgrade Mortal Kombat 11 is over X, and while it is fair to highlight that X was built on Unreal Engine 3 and happens to be a few years old, the difference is still massive. What you have here in Mortal Kombat 11 is Netherrealm's most beautiful work to date. Subtle textures pop from characters, special effects explode with carnage, and every level is a work of art. I could honestly spend all day in the Shirai Ryu Fire Gardens if I was given the chance to do so. Beyond the story mode, Shang Tsung's island and traditional towers, 
Mortal Kombat 11 is also taking a page out of the Injustice 2 playbook, as it plans to keep its community busy with numerous towers spread across time. Much like in the other realms DC fighting game, these towers will pop in and out of existence, offering new challenges and rewards for anyone who dares to take them on. You'll need plenty of help to do so, and with Mortal Kombat 11 allowing players to enhance their combat with all manner of consumable items earned from conquering other towers, this system adds an interesting new wrinkle to the dynamics of these challenges. You might find yourself using an assist from Cyrax to hold foes in place, guzzle down a potion to make yourself immune to blood-seeking rockets, or you could add a few frames of invincibility to your character. It is a fascinating collection of power-ups, which all feature their own levels of fairness in the greater scheme of things. How this will be received from players who choose not to toggle these assists off in competition remains to be seen in the weeks that are still to come as the fighting game community digs deep into Netherrealm's latest masterpiece.